Welcome back to another YouTube video and today we're going to be talking about SEO competitor analysis and actually how to analyse your competition. Maybe you are a brand new company and you are trying to essentially scale up your SEO side, your organic SEO um, in your local area or for example you might also be an existing website um, that might be stuck on page two or your your keywords just isn't showing up in, in positions one to five, let's say. Um, so a few things that we're going to be covering in this video. Number one is obviously the on-page SEO. So what we should be looking at from the amount of pages that we have on our website, how to gain topical authority for our brand um, and also the off-page SEO side of stuff as well. Um, so we're going to be looking at two sides to this. Um, these are probably the, the biggest ROI sites. There are obviously multiple things that you could be looking at that would be lower ROI, but from a brand new website, if we were to set up a brand new website, these are some of the few things that I would be looking at. So for example, let's say we wanted to rank for lawyers in London. Um, what I would be looking at is obviously search your keyword and um, one thing that I would recommend doing as well when you are searching keywords like this so I've just searched lawyers in London we obviously have the PPC listings or the sponsored listings that we obviously want to ignore because these guys have paid to be there so they're not SEO then you want to also um, if you are a brand new website, this is ignore the map pack because the map pack does take a little bit of time to essentially pop into. Um, and another thing that we also want to ignore as well is any directory style website. So bestlawyers.com for anybody that doesn't know about the, the law industry, these guys are like a massive directory for lawyers. They're kind of very similar to yelp.com. Um, or if you are in America, Yelp.com as well. Um, so the reason why we want to essentially ignore these guys as well is because they are in, in the same playing field as us. They're not like a local competitor. These guys will have a lot of powerful links. They'll have a lot of um, pages as well on their website. So it's an unfair advantage. It's kind of like if if I was to go and set up a e-commerce website tomorrow selling mattresses, the last thing that I would want to be doing is comparing myself to Amazon or Walmart because they are huge in comparison to what I do. It's just an unfair advantage and if you were to do SEO competitor analysis in comparison to Amazon's to best lawyers, it's obviously going to come back and say you're going to need 9,000 pages, right? And from a business point of view it's going to be very shocking because you're going to initially think oh my god I need to spend hundreds if not thousands of pounds on links and content and it's not actually the case so always just make certain to ignore um, any um, directory style websites like the bestlawyers.com uh, example right so then that leads us to Farrer.co.uk, um, Bark as well in the UK, is, it's kind of like a, um, a directory website, so again with Bark I would be um, not picking that to essentially compare to. Legal 500 as well, this again is another directory website, so out of the top one Two, three, four, out of the top five results, I would only be looking at farrer.co.uk and kingsnapley.co.uk um, only because those two guys, they actually are law firms, they actually are um, local competition to us. And again, this similar strategy goes for any type of website. So if we were trying to sell um, uh, mattresses, we don't want to be comparing to Walmart. We don't want to be comparing to Amazon. We want to be comparing to other mattress selling companies. Um, so this is very, very universal, but the type of website that we are eliminating is, is a little bit different. If you're a local business, you're obviously going to be eliminating the yells of the world, the bark.com, all the directory websites. If you're an e-commerce website, you obviously want to be eliminating um, the, the wholesale um, 
websites like the Amazons, like the Walmarts, um, and any any website like that. And if you are an affiliate, so for example, if you're trying to rank for best running shoes, you're going to want to ignore Forbes.com, for example, because again, those are monster websites. Try to compare to what is actually super niche relevant to yourself. So now that we actually have um, faro.co.uk, we're, we're going to be using um, a site operator command. So for anybody that has never used the site operator command, it's going to be site colon and we can just use this. So this will essentially tell us um, how many pages this website has on the, um, on the actual um, index, right? So for example, right now, what the site colon command does is it tells Google, I only wanna see results from farrow.co.uk. Now, one thing to always bear in mind is to check if they actually have any subdomains. So what I would typically be doing is doing www. So as we can see here, they have got 3,740 pages. Now, does that mean you need 3,741 pages on your website? No, it doesn't. Because if we take a look at um, this page here, right? They've got a subscribe page, so you're subscribing to their mailing list. Is this directly impacting their SEO rankings? Probably not. Um, they also have a load of pages talking about potential solicitors um, or types of solicitors that actually work for them. Again, do you need these types of pages? From an EEAT point of view, it would help, but Again, if you're trying to rank for Solicitors London or Lawyers London, um, some of these pages you will need to go in with like a kind of like a second eye and say, right, okay, these pages they're not going to get me from positions five to position one. Um, so just bear that in mind when you are scaling out a website. Um, like I, I again, I'm seeing a lot of um, people pages. One thing that I actually want to do is, if we go to, um, so if I was gonna actually replicate this website for myself, um, the first thing that I would probably do is they actually have a good URL structure. Um, so I'm, I would be looking at all of the sectors that they actually provide law advice in, because that's probably gonna get us the, high, the highest ROI. When you're doing competitor analysis, it's all about gating the, or essentially rebuilding the pages on your website that has the highest ROI. That's the first thing we want to focus on. Now, although you could be creating the, these pages for EEAT um, to essentially help build a brand, these pages aren't going to essentially traject or project you from positions 10 to position 1, right? Um, however, if we were to go back to um, all of the sectors that they actually do law for, so like lawyers for business, uh, or sorry, business lawyers, education lawyers, um, media and publishing, schools, partnerships and LLPs, entrepreneurs, these are all pages that people are actually searching. So for example, if somebody was searching, I need a lawyer for entrepreneurs, or I need a lawyer for partnerships, or I need a lawyer for, um, what else was there? Business or business lawyers, right? Um, there is a good chance that this website would come up and the person that is actually searching that keyword, it's pretty high intent, so they would be looking to fill out the form um, when it comes to something like business law, or they might even phone you. Um, so always bear that in mind when you are looking at competitor analysis, just because they've got 3,740 pages doesn't mean that you need 3,740 pages. Um, one thing I also want to take a look at is lawyers in London. So if we take a look at this, so kingsleynately.co.uk, um, these guys rank two positions, on, sorry, three positions lower than farrow.co.uk. Now if we were to do site colon for these guys, 
as you can see, these guys actually have more pages. These guys have 11,000 pages. So just bear that in mind that the amount of pages is only one algorithm. Google has loads of different algorithms. They have a links algorithm. They have a content freshness algorithm, page rank algorithm, all of these different algorithms. So don't just be looking at the number of pages. It's also to do with the amount of quality pages that you also have as well. So don't just think you're going to be able to mass produce 16,000 pages and start ranking for uh, Lawyers of London because it's not the case, right? So now let's take a look at um, the backlink profile as well because this I feel is super important as well. Now a few things that you can obviously do when you are looking at backlinks is you could, either, you could either look at a backlink analysis from a domain to domain level, um, which I'll show you right now. So if you have Ahrefs, what I recommend is going to the backlink section, going over to, or well, first of all, what I'd like to mention is that this website has 7,483 domains. Does that mean that you need 7,500 uh, backlinks? No, because not all of these backlinks will be uh, will be passing power. Um, bear that in mind when you are looking at link building or, or off-page SEO. It's not about the the, the amount of qual or the, the amount of quantity of links. It's also to do with the quality as well. So we're going to set up a few filters in Ahrefs. We're going to go to do follow. We're also going to do backlink type in content. We're also going to be looking at anything above a DR threshold of, let's say, 30, um, 25 or 30. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll keep it at 25. So as you can see here, we've went down massively to 1,474 domains. Um, again, does that mean that you need 1,500 backlinks? No, um, because faro.co.uk they might be they might be providing more services you might they might um, also have a an accounting um, service that they also offer or they might um, for example serve for non-profits whereas you might not so always bear that in mind it doesn't always mean that you need more backlinks than them um, and again in some cases if you are able to get a really good um, backlink that can essentially do the, the, the power of, let's say, 10 of their backlinks as well. So always just bear that in mind when you are doing um, any form of link building. You always want to focus on the, the quality of the link because, again, you could essentially try to outrank these guys with 500 backlinks. Um, you might not need the, the 1,000 um, if your backlinks are really good. Now, a few things to bear in mind as well. If you do, let's say, get a link that these guys also have, let's say 123.co.com link to both uh, farrow.co.uk and your website as well, you can also do tiered links as well. So that's essentially when you link a link to one of your links that then links up to your website. Um, that might sound slightly a bit confusing, so I will show you a diagram on that. So this is the diagram of tiered links, right? So if we have a backlink that points through to our website up here, and this website or this backlink, it could be from Forbes, it could be from, it could be from BBC, let's say this also linked to your competitor as well. The ultimate way of getting a better link than them, even though it's on the same domain name pointing through to your website, is building tier two links through to that guest post. Um, so just bear that in mind when you are doing any kind of link building, you can superpower your backlinks as well. If you guys do have any questions about the tiered link building or the off-page SEO, just drop them down in the comment section. More than happy to help you guys. Um, so just bear that in mind when you are looking at backlinks. Now, another uh, section that I feel like a lot of people don't take a good look at is the link intersect section here, right? So. The first step that you would want to do is um, obviously plug in your own website. So I'll, I'll just do dash lawyers.com here. This is just a dummy domain. Let's say it's our brand new website, right? So we click search. Obviously, everything's going to be zero here. Then what we want to do is click on the link intersect. 
click um, or paste in your URLs. So what I will do is lawyers in London and let's click on to King's Napoli as well and also Sterling Law. So these are free law firms all ranking in London um, very, very highly, all three of them. So we've got positions two, position three, four, five, and also position seven, right? Click on show link opportunities. Now what this does is it will show us websites that link through to our free competitors, but they don't link through to us. So as you can see, we've got 3,729 domains that don't link to Dash Lawyers. Now, what you can do is obviously filter out by free targets to begin with. So then you have got 46 domains that don't link out to Dash Lawyers, but they do link out to all of our competitors. So for example, we have got Review Solicitors, which is like a directory website um, for solicitors. If any of you guys are in America, solicitors is basically lawyers. Um, we just call them solicitors because why not? Um, but this will give us a list of websites that link to our competitors that don't link to ours. Now, does that mean that you need every single link in this list? Definitely not. What I would be looking at is looking at the quality of the links or of these websites and getting the, the best um, and then moving down to two intersections and then obviously moving down to one intersection as well. So for example, our competitors, two of them have a link from The Guardian, they've got a couple of Wikipedia links, Medium links, Business Insider. So some of these are really, really good to get. Um, and again, if say for example, competitor one and two have a link and then a couple links down competitors one and three have a link you're all you're basically getting the best links that all of your competitors have so you're aggregating every you get you're aggregating a list of every single link but you're just cherry picking the best links and um, that you can get your hands on so it's super important to essentially do that when you are doing any form of competitor analysis make certain to check the actual amount of pages make certain to um, look at the links but also cherry pick the best ones because again if you are just setting up a brand new website it can be you might have tight budgets um, so just bear that in mind from an ROI point of view you always want to be focusing on ROI especially as, as a business um, so a few questions that I do get asked whenever I do any competitor analysis is obviously the most commonly asked question is if my competitors have 3,000 pages, do I need 3,500 pages? No, definitely not. Um, you should be focusing on quality content. Um, that's going to go the long run. And again, like what I said before in the video, your competitors might have services that they offer that you don't offer. Um, so hence why they have a bigger website. The second commonly asked question that I get is, do I need 6,000 backlinks? Because my competitor has 6,000 backlinks. Obviously not. Um, looking at all of these uh, websites, a lot of the links just pass noise. You need to be able to essentially filter out the noisy links for the actual quality for the actual quality links. So just bear that in mind when you are doing any form of off-page SEO try to filter out any bad um, or toxic links. Again, not every single link has a positive impact. If it is a toxic link, it can have a negative ranking factor to your website as well. So just bear that in mind when you are looking to scale out your website and when you are doing competitor SEO analysis. So that's been my video on SEO competitor analysis. If you guys do have any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comment section. And if you guys want a free 15-minute strategy call, make sure to check out casualdash.com. Thanks.